This is part 3 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss HTTP put, post and delete verbs. This is continuation to part 2, so please watch part 2 before proceeding. When we talk about a database table row, these are the four actions that we can perform on the row. Create, read, update or delete a row. In the context of an ASP.NET Web API resource, these four actions correspond to get, post, put and delete as shown in the table right here. Let's now understand some terms and concepts related to HTTP request and response system. Request verbs. These HTTP verbs get, post, put and delete describe what should be done with the resource. For example, do you want to create, read, update or delete an entity? Get, put, post and delete HTTP verbs are the most commonly used ones. For the complete list of the HTTP verbs, please visit this URL right here. Request header. When a client sends a request to the server, the request contains a header and a body. The request header contains additional information such as what type of response is required. For example, do you want the response from the server to be in XML, JSON or some other format? Request body. Request body contains the data you want to send to the server. For example, a post request contains the data for the new item that you want to create. The data format may be in XML or JSON. Response body. The response body contains the data sent as a response from the server. For example, if the request is for a specific product, the response body includes product details either in XML or JSON format. Response status codes. These are the HTTP status codes that give the client details on the status of the request. Some of the common status codes are 200 for OK, 404 not found, 204 no content. For the complete list of HTTP status codes and what they mean, please visit this URL right here. Now we'll use a tool called Fiddler to perform post, put and delete actions. You can download Fiddler from this URL right here. I've already downloaded and installed it. Now let's modify the values controller that we worked with in our previous video so that it can support post, put and delete actions. Let's now flip to Visual Studio. This is the same example that we worked with in our previous video. Within our values controller class, at the class level, let's include a static variable. The type is going to be list of string. Let's name it strings. This list is going to contain three strings. So it's going to contain value one, value two. In addition to these two strings, let's include another string and the value in this string is going to be value zero. And what we want this get method to do is return the list. So let's simply return our static variable strings. We have another overloaded version of get method which has an ID parameter. We want to use this ID as an index. For example, if we pass zero as the value for ID, then we want to return the string that is present at index position zero within our static variable, which is value zero. If we pass one, then return value one. If we pass two, return value two. So from this overloaded version of the get method, let's return strings of ID. Post method, we use this method to create a new item. Notice this method has this value parameter which is of type string. So whatever string that we are passing to this method, we want to add it to our static variable. So let's call the add method and pass the value to that. Put method, we use this to update an item. Notice this method has got two parameters the ID of the item that we want to update and the new value with which we want to update it with. Okay, so we are going to use the ID as the index and we want to update the item at that index position with this new value that is also coming in as a parameter. We use the delete method to remove an item. So let's use this ID to remove an item at the specified index position. So strings dot remove at and we pass the ID 
to that function which is going to remove the string at that index position. All right, so let's give our solution a build. So the build has started, as you can see in the status bar. It's going to take a few seconds to complete. The build has completed now. Let's reissue the request. Since we have rebuilt the solution, it's going to take a few seconds to reload. Notice we have got three strings as expected. Let's now launch Fiddler and perform post, put, and delete actions. I'm going to click on Start, All Apps, scroll down a bit, and then select Fiddler. This should launch Fiddler, and I'm going to delete this traffic which is already captured. Let's now issue the GET request once again. This request should have been captured by Fiddler. There we have it. I'm going to double click on this. Notice the response that we are getting back is XML. Notice we have values from 0 till 2. Now what I'm going to do is click on the Composer tab, drag and drop the request onto the Composer tab. So the request that we have issued is get. This is the URI to which we have issued that request. Now we want to issue a post request and create a new item. So I'm going to click on this drop down. Notice in addition to get, post, put and delete, we have several other HTTP verbs as well. Let's select post and with post we also have to specify request body and I'm going to specify the request body in JSON format. So the new item that we want to add to our static variable is new string. And when we send something to the server, we have to specify the content type. So I'm going to specify that in the header. So we use content type for that. And the content type is going to be JSON. So application for slash JSON. And then I'm going to click Execute. Notice the request completed. Let's double click on that. Look at the status code that we are getting back. 204 no content. It's just a post request. We have added a new item to the collection. There's nothing to return. That's the reason why we get 204 no content. Now let's verify whether the item has been added to our static variable. And to do that, I'm going to go to the Composer tab once again and then issue a GET request. With the GET request, we don't specify a request body. That's the reason why it has become red. So I'm going to delete that and then execute this once again. The request executed completed successfully. Now, first of all, notice you know we have our four strings, value 0, 1, 2, and our new string. And if you look at the response header, look at that. The HTTP status code that we got is 200 OK. And what we are getting back here at the moment is XML. Now, if you want the response to be in JSON, then you specify that with your request header. So let's go to the Composer tab. And in our get request, so here, look at that. At the moment, we accept any of these text slash HTML, application slash XHTML or XML. Now we have XML available, you know, from the web API. So that's what we are getting. But if you want JSON, you can specify that using this accept header here. So I'm going to delete all this and then specify application for slash JSON. And then let's reissue the request. So request completed successfully. Let's double click on that. Notice now what we are getting back is a JSON object. We've got value one, uh, 0, 1, 2, and our new string. Now we've seen how to perform a post. Now let's see how to perform uh, you know, put action. So I'm going to go back to the Composer tab and then select put instead of post. And let's say we want to update that new string to updated string. So we want JSON back. And we are going to send. JSON to the server. So let's specify content type. And we want the new string to be updated string. And then, and we want to update the last string. And the index position for that is 3. So now let's go ahead and execute our request. 
So here is our request. Again, look at that. Since it's an update, we get HTTP status code 204, no content. Let's go ahead and change this to a GET request. And with GET request, we don't have the body. So let's go ahead and delete that. And let's issue a GET request to values URI. Execute that. And here is the request completed successfully. And notice that the value is updated to updated string. Now, finally, let's issue a delete request. Let's go back to the composer, change this to delete. And we want to delete our last item, which is present at index position 3. And let's issue the request. So it's completed. Again, we get 204, no content. Let's go back to the composer tab and change this to get and execute. For some reason, we get a 500 error. 500 is internal server error. That's basically because if you look at our composer, look at the get request that we have issued. We have issued a get request to an item that is present at index position 3. We don't have an item at index position 3. That's the reason why we have got that error. So let's get rid of that ID there. And then when we execute this, the request should complete successfully. So the header, 200 OK. And if we look at the raw data, what we are getting back is JSON, because that's what we have asked for. We want the response format to be in JSON. Now, when we use this index position 3, we got an exception, 500 internal server error. We'll discuss how to deal with these exceptions in a later video. Now, if you look at these three methods, post, put, and delete. For all these three methods, the return type is void. And that's the reason why we get the HTTP status code as 204 no content. We have complete control on what status codes we want to return from these methods with ASP.NET Web API. We'll discuss how to do that in a later video. Thank you for listening, and have a great day.